So, all right, welcome everyone. My name is Lana Coley and on behalf of the Center for Hellenic Studies, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for another session of the CHS Visiting Artists Series. One reason we've been facilitating this program is to encourage collaboration between researchers and artists. And today we'll see one such collaboration in progress. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Mateo Tarasco, a theater director who is notable for his investigation of myth from a female perspective. Most recently, he conceived and directed Penelope, which was chosen to represent Italy in the contest Focus on the Italian Theater, organized by Mibacht and the Italian Institute of Culture. He is the only Italian director nominated as a member of the Lincoln Center Theater Directors Lab in New York City, and he has been a guest director at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. And I'd also like to introduce CHS fellow Manuela Pellegrino. She is an anthropologist who has conducted longstanding ethnographic research on Greco, a language of Greek origins used in Apulia, Southern Italy. She is the author of a new book in the CHS Hellenic Studies series entitled Greek Language, Italian Landscape, Greco and the Restoring of a Linguistic Minority. So welcome, Matteo and Manuela. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And a friendly reminder to our audience, uh, please, if you can kindly mute yourself during the, during the presentation, since we'll be showing video and just to uh, cut out any interference from other sounds, uh, there will be time for questions at the end. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's everything. So Matteo and Manuela, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lana. Good evening or good morning to everyone, according to, to where you are. It's a, it's a pleasure, of course, uh, to, to be here. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say um, that I want to thank you, everyone who helped uh, this project to, to come to this uh, stage today. Uh, Leonardo, who is, uh, who is probably listening to us, who is, a, who is the person who, is, uh, who filmed uh, the video that uh, we're going to show, and Lana, especially for organizing, for helping us uh, throughout. I also um, said a few qu a quick uh, hello to my uh, Greek friends. I'm really happy to see a few of them uh, there. And before I pass on the word to, to Matteo, I just would like to uh, introduce and contextualize the path that led uh, to, to this project. And that means uh, to give you a brief introduction about Greco. Um, so um, as Alana said, is a, a language of Greek origins, a variety of Greek. Uh, used in uh, the southern Italian province of Lecce. And um, what is important to know about it is that it was transmitterly, transmitted orally from generation to generation, but for a long time it has been considered a dying language. And uh, in actual fact, it stopped being transmitted as a mother tongue in uh, the post-World War II uh, period. Uh, when it was internalized as a language uh, of the past and uh, in symbolic opposition to Italian. Now, the situation today is uh, rather different, uh, but uh, let me also say that I'm the granddaughter of Greek speakers and uh, that I, as I always like to, to say, I became an anthropologist. I decided to, to go through uh, to um, the PhD in anthropology because I wanted to make sense of this story, first of all, to myself. Um, and uh, that's when I also started learning the language. So I was 29 years old. That's, that means I'm not a, a mother speaker. Um, but that also means that I am a native anthropologist and that's a category um, uh, which was con more contested in the past, I guess, that, uh, than in the present. Uh, but um, what we are gonna show today is uh, what Greco, the role of Greco that is uh, acquiring uh, more uh, throughout time, which is uh, its function, its performative uh, function. Because while um, uh, locals often uh, lament and comment uh, metalinguistically that Greek does not have the words, as it were, to talk about the present, um, at the same time, they've used it more and more uh, in uh, performances, but also in a performative way, in the sense that is even just a, a word or two in, in Greek said at the right time uh, gave a flavor of the, uh, of the, peop of the people themselves. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and uh, pass on the word uh, to, to Matteo. 
Thank you, Manuela, and uh, good morning and good evening to all. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I wish to thank uh, Lana for the great organization and uh, all the Harvard uh, Greek department. And uh, I, I wish to, to tell you why I'm here. Uh, I, I know uh, Manuela uh, since a uh, long time, and we know each other on stage. Uh, we work together in, in theater. She, she acts with me in, in different pieces, uh, in different workshops that we, we do together in, in Lecce and in Salento. Uh, I, I'm here, of course, because Manuela uh, won't, I want to be here, but because uh, since when I start uh, working as director, I really need uh, to uh, go through different cultures. I mean, I, I usually think my job as a director, I, I think theater as an instrument to understand the world and people and the human being. So uh, I, I feel very near to what is very far from me. Uh, what I mean is that theater and art in general is an opportunity and, and an opportunity to, to discover something within yourself and to discover something in the world. So. I don't know nothing about Grico. Uh, I discover through Grico some things that is very connected to my root as a human being. I mean, any languages that survive in this strange world where the languages are, are changing, it doesn't matter if you speak English, Italian, Greek, or whatever, but uh, we are using a sort of a basic language that is very poor. So the, the aim to rediscover, to save uh, ancient uh, languages as Greek is something important, not only for the Greek community, but uh, for all the human being community uh, in the way that uh, if you know where you come from, you, you know where you can go in the future. So I think that we are using now a sort of basic languages that uh, explain things, uh, but don't touch the real meaning of things. This is why when I read the, what I call the poems of Manuela, she prefers to call, I think, uh, fairy tale, Whatever we are going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> Whatever they are, I, I feel very, uh, very near to this uh, strange word, strange from my point of view. And so I, I recognize something, and, and is what we hope you can do uh, viewing our videos. Why we have uh, two videos that you, you will see. Uh, of course, we prefer to be uh, in real presence. Uh, we prefer to create something, uh, a sort of performance that uh, we can share in the same place. Uh, the situation the world are, are living today is, is very complicated. And so with Manuela, we imagine a different way, just not only to speak here in our rooms uh, with, with uh, a computer, with Zoom, but uh, a sort of way to suggest to you how Greco, Greco sounds. And so we create these two little videos uh, that uh, now you will see and that we discuss. So thank you very much to be here. Thank you to Manuela. Lana, is your moment. Thank you. Hi. 
Είχε μια φορά και την έχει η κόρα μια κατέρα, την Ροζαλία, που μιλεί με τάλασσα. Κανονεί το νερό που χωρέει και γελά και της φαίνεται όριο καπούρου η τάλασσα εν μια γυναίκα. Ήου, λέει πάντα η Ροζαλία, και πούρου και τη φορά πήρτε να μιλήσει με τάλασσα. Μα ενίσχε ρε καλά, τι τέλε να πει, τι να ρωτήσει. Και της είπε τραγουτώντα. Πε μου στα τι, πε μου στα τι, πε μου στα τι. Σου που ήρθε να δει, γιατί ήρθε να βρει. Η Αλήσια, η Ροσαλία, δεν τραγουδά μάι. Τσίνι πιάνει, γράφει, τσεκούνται ιστορίε. Μα δε, δε, δεν τραγουδά μάι. Ma ne ha mi talassa travudà, con duarte. Su talassa ferni tu nero, a se clamata c'è a se eia, e tu puieni ti me vo, i vo panta se doro. Su talassa ferni foni tu, c'è da loia e pane camena, te l'arte c'è pe mozzati. Irtarte, irta ya sena, pe mustati, arte pe mustati, pe mustati, jo pu irte na di, je ti zirte na sebi. I Rosalia pistei je lei, kaita na sa ferni ti foni ato yeno masafike. Ma poi ancora tutta bramma da una vita. Canina va lume scupò, ma anche zi ne accusò me calà. C'è io e come, e cai se ambrosti talassà, c'è mi pe tipo di pleo. C'è l'ora a zicco se ne accusi mi affonì. C'è de poi Dio, Tri, tessere, chiefone, c'è perché, c'è di nenghisane potre cardie, gomai asce speranza, uercute a tu cosmo a limon in meno. De poi cuse o le tefone no mene, quando mi affoni manechi, mi nafichete. Τι καρδία σα να πεσένει, σύμβερη, να τσίσετε αύριο, πίση. Η Ροσαλία ανόησε καλά, τσί όπου της είπε τάλασσα. Φίλησε μαμάντια το νερό και πήρτε αμπρό να τραγουδήσει τη φωνή τη τάλασσα. Τε φωνέ α τη τάλασσα.
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, Manuela. And everyone else can. Okay, now it's the part in which I am very embarrassed. <laughs> but it's also the, the part in which I have to, to give you more information about the aim of this project and, uh, and also the, the path that, uh, that led to it. Um, this is uh, Rosalia Gifoniti Talasa. Was, I, I wrote it in, uh, in the summer of 2019. That was a, a moment in which uh, in Italy there was a, a migrant crisis and uh, we were reading and watching TV constantly about uh, people being uh, um, not admitted to, uh, to reach uh, uh, the land. Um, and a lot of people lost their lives uh, uh, in that moment. So that's uh, uh, my attempt, that was my attempt to, uh, to use Grico to talk about something that is happening today and still uh, reflect the way in which uh, locals tend to use uh, this language. So through storytelling and poems. And that's also why um, there was this, uh, mm, this sort of a discussion about how to call them, whether these are poems or whether uh, this is a fairy tale. I, I initially resisted the, the very term poem um, because I, I thought it was uh, um, not just something that it was uh, done by me, but as I said, because uh, it reflects uh, uh, a modality in which uh, locals uh, um, express themselves, uh, they like writing poems. And actually, uh, just today, um, one of the most well-known poems uh, uh, of the greek speaking villages, Chichi Cafaro, left us uh, from Calimera. So, you know, this, this uh, um, seminar would like to also to be a thank you to everyone that engaged with Grico throughout uh, life. And um, he was a poet, and that's, uh, and that's why um, poems uh, come back uh, uh, time and again, also in what I call uh, uh, fairy tales. I looked at them uh, throughout my ethnographic uh, research, looking um, at them not uh, from uh, the point uh, uh, of view of, uh, um, uh, of the structure, uh, the, I mean, in, in, they are very simple uh, in search for rhymes, uh, uh, but there is an alignment to a specific uh, aesthetics, uh, uh, which is simple, but uh, it gives value to the form as, uh, as much uh, as to the content. Um, that uh, fairy tale of uh, Rosalia and the voice from the sea was actually published in a local newspaper. And this is another important uh, part of uh, the life of, uh, of Greco today. It is um, the journal Spita. Uh, and uh, people at times criticize the attempt of locals to write uh, prose in Greco because of what I said earlier on, because it, 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 it is believed to lack the linguistic resources uh, uh, to deal with the modernity. Um, and that opens a lot of debates, uh, whether to take them from modern Greek uh, or whether to adapt them from the Romans uh, variety, the Romans dialect. Um, so uh, there are a lot of issues uh, involved in Greek, but uh, what this um, experiment, because that's what, that's what it is at the end of the day, wants to give justice uh, once again to that function of, uh, of Greek and to the fact that as one of my people here said, certain things never change and those sound better in Greek. And that's actually one, the, the, chap, the title of one of the chapters of, of the book. So Greek still mm, retain that, uh, that, functions, uh, that function. And it is uh, something that um, is as a sort of, uh, of uh, history by now, because uh, from the very beginning, from a moment in which uh, from Vito Domenico Palumbo, a folklorist from Calimera, who started writing, actually putting down the language after a big gap in which uh, uh, it was uh, transmitted orally, then this sort of tradition kept going. So now there is a material legacy made out of all poems, uh, at times uh, are turned into songs. So they keep feeling the, the materiality of, uh, um, uh, through the materiality of Grico, uh, the place uh, itself. So that, that was um, uh, the premise um, of, uh, of, of this first video. The second video that we are going to watch is somehow uh, different, but uh, maybe 
uh, we will we can talk about it uh, after we we watch it. But uh, after my initial embarrassment, I mean, the, the, what this is about is my attempt to um, merge uh, my anthropological research, my artistic uh, drives, which I've long repressed, and uh, the echoes of, uh, of my own life and uh, the people that uh, um, are part of it. Okay, thank you, Manuela. Uh, we, we create uh, this uh, little video um, thinking about the, the word the theater uh, and uh, asking ourselves uh, what means theater? Uh, of course, theater, we, we understand uh, this most of all in this difficult period, is not only a, a physical place. Uh, I mean, uh, the theater could be even a landscape, we ask to ourselves, uh, and this video won't be an affirmative answer, uh, which that landscape that you see, that is uh, uh, the Adriatic Sea, part uh, uh, of Italy, the, the most eastern part of Italy, uh, where we could, uh, to explain better uh, the functionality and the power of these languages. Uh, what I mean is that uh, uh, in an anthropog anthropological way, uh, the ambient, uh, the landscape uh, suggests the way to express yourself uh, in, in every part of the world, of course. Uh, it was very lucky speak uh, in a production way because uh, we shoot uh, the video in February uh, with the amazing uh, sun as a summer but it's February uh, and there was no one usually that place that you see uh, in the video are full of people uh, absolutely you can't walk on that beach because there are uh, plenty human being uh, uh, getting tan, uh, playing, uh, listening to music. Uh, but when we go there in the early morning, every morning, a uh, few times sleep, uh, we, we found uh, the, uh, like there's no human being. And so the human being could be where there's no one. And it was a, a very emotional for us to enter with in, in the nature uh, with respect uh, listening to the sea to the wind uh, and, and understand how little we are and how we are only instrument of, of uh, a more big purpose more big meaning that is the meaning of, of the fairy tale uh, of Manuela Pellegrino, um, there's something bigger than us, in, in this case, the sea, and listen to the phonet, to the sound, to the voice of uh, uh, the sea. It, it means to listen how we can improve ourselves as a human being. Uh, Manuela suggests that he wrote uh, this fairy tale in, in a moment where the situation uh, of uh, immigration in Italy was very uh, complicated uh, by a political wave and other uh, aspects. Uh, these people that uh, uh, across, go across the sea, uh, of course they do this to to stay alive, and uh, but and, and so it, it is something very concrete, very practical. But uh, it's also a, a metaphor for all of us. I mean, we need to cross uh, the sea, the sea of water, and the sea within us of our souls. And uh, the aim of our job is to go through the border, to cross the border, even the border of of the mirror uh, uh, is not a question of ego, in my opinion, but it's a question of, uh, we are a sort of mirror of all the human beings. So uh, writing, shooting, and uh, uh, trying to 
to be part of the world uh, through arts uh, is a way to, to mirroring uh, the human being through yourself. And this is why I'm, I'm very glad that Manuela uh, accept to be on video, not only to be the author of the fairy tale, but also to be uh, the, the, not the, the protagonist, but the sort of uh, uh, person who use her face, her body, to give a testimoniation of uh, what the, her culture is, what the Greco is. And in my opinion, as director of this video, there was no other way. We cannot cast an, an actress or an actor uh, we need to, to be in there, within there, uh, without compromission. This, this is why... And without makeup. Come on, let's put the second video because of I'm very course, nervous. without makeup. Uh... Tell it before this, it starts. <clears throat> Ah, beautiful. Ihe mi anfora, che ti nechi ancora, mi anche adera, di Rosalia, po grafi tu fengo. che sto provati ah, e ti ne piene o inno c'è l'ora qui che ha processo io sei cannecini hai tosso una ascelita e sconna donna durissima mi chiedo fengo c'è molo bu grivinato i rosalia iscere Ishi panos di nangera, ishi anastasi. Che ishi repuru, kao fengo e nehi, de hili, de foni. Ma chini, e ti fenato nam prammanashimo. O fengo, e nehi foni. Ma e hi hiya, ma pleo ka hiya matia ka spita rizune. Ka ine da steria. Che da matia e hune hiya, Brahogna c'è ada tossa geria. I Rosalia e grafe oli di nimera. Ma molti e nesta zenano isi to ieno c'è da prammata tu cosmo e grafe tu fengo. C'è io piani c'è tu grafi in angramma. Fengo, venga rimo a gabi meno. Simbri o cosmo asciuni se stravò. Tina camo, namo pi su meno. Vieno, pistei solo che pistesti no. Oli mi lune ce l'ene ti cane, ma ti sposceri di lei, casande, e ni camo sta sonta oli tu de? Fengo, venga rimo a gabi meno. Vieno, mi cardia, poni poggi. Pemmo, namo pi su arte meno. Dice sta mati a tu, te lo natoristi. C'è oli fuori utte nazisune, che senza foni e namilisune, a brachogna di non e nighizune. Fengo, fengari mo agabi meno, o ieno zimane hotu, zumulei, grasce nan gramma, i voi tu meno, ti na peseni mane hotu, e tel. Motti spicce sciasce grasci, i Rosalia i fona se da steri do pleon aspro, aspro sanchioni venato. Ce petonta petonta estase. Mino, ca su di una gramma ce pare tosto fengo. O asteri e ni petipoti ce iurise sti nanghera. Iurise ce pirte sto fengo C'è todi che to gramma putu che do con tai rosalia. Ie ti ste sceiela, e tu che mai cu son ta. Catasteria petune stinanghera, camotioli blonnune, 
το φέγγο γράφει μέσα στα στέρια. Και δε πω η Τσίνα βάτουνε τα λόγια σε ένα χαρτί. Και χωρέον τα μονάνεμο φέρνουνε τα γράμματα το σκριστιανό. Τουό το σέρι σου. Η Ροσαλία ήου ελεπάντα και ήου πήρτε μα πάλι να πλώσει. Ότι και μέρωσε η μέρα, πιάνει και ήουρισε τα στέρι. Και της άφηκε το γράμμα του φέγγου. Η Ροσαλία Είχε σιουνίσον τα μαμπατία όλα κομπομένα. Μα μότι τόρισε το γράμμα, χειρές τη ποτή. Ρωσαλία μου αγαπημένη, και να καμισού μα ρωτά, ένα μελετήσι τον αμπρό, τα λόγια, που χορεύουνε μη ζωή. Ο κόσμο κάντζεσαι, μάρτε, ένα κάντζεσαι δε εσύ. Κάντζεσαι ο κόσμο. Ήκουσα τόσε φορέ του το πράγμα. Πάντα γιου λέανε οι κριστιανοί πλέον μάλλοι. Κάντζεσαι ο κόσμο λέανε. Και κάντζεσαι τι κανέ. Τι πήρτε να πει ο φέγκο. Δέκα ο κόσμο. So zi can jeshi ma pale. C'è io, qui che puscesso. Rai, rai. E sta sesti mesi. Ma esci, e ni che ti no. Γιατί, και πούρου κάνει σίγρα, πέτσε η Ροζαλία. Και μ' ακούω πόντι κάμα έκανε τώρα, γιατί ο καλοσέρι δεν είχε εμποντά. Πράι, πράι, έστασε στα μπέια πασάντου. Καίανε ο κοράφι που είχε πολεμίσοντα πούρου η νάνατη. Y la bretana. Che, ni de ti no. Brai, brai, esta se es de talasa. Corre a un dupanta, disfani. Mamá, en cuixi, y que ti no. Brai, brai, chini. Ma en nifris que pupe ti ti no. Y que ti que yo vengo. O cosmo, cangeshe. Ο κόσμο κάντζεσαι, μάρτε, ένα κάντζεσαι τα εσύ. Ok, Matteo, shall I start? Yes, you start. Ok. I just want to say how this fairy tale, this poem, however we want to call it, differs from the previous one. Um, first of all, I wrote it, I started writing it actually just as today, one year ago. At the time I was uh, stuck in, uh, in Greece. I had moved um, at the beginning of February to conduct uh, fieldwork uh, 
on my other project on environmental crisis and uh, I couldn't travel back to Italy because of, uh, of COVID. And that was a moment uh, which I'm sure everyone um, shared with me of, uh, of confusion. I couldn't seem to, to concentrate on, on work. I couldn't write anthropology. Um, and uh, I, I simply got stuck. And Grigo, as uh, in these cases often happens, came to, to help. As opposed to looking for words, maybe because Grigo has uh, less words, they come uh, to mind uh, more easily. So that's when I started writing um, this uh, fairy tale about the moon. And the moon had a mo in that moment had a meaning also because uh, the confusion was all around me and um, it looked like um, a light coming from, from above would, uh, would help um, everyone, including me. But what really makes, uh, makes it different is that I made a, comfort, a comfort, uh, conscious effort to uh, build on uh, fairy tales that were written and, uh, and transcribed and uh, that are available now online. Uh, so these are um, from the end of the 19th century. And I decided that I wanted to build on them, not in terms of content, but in trying to um, preserve, let's say, to, um, to preserve the specificities that often uh, get lost uh, today. And I mean, the repetitions uh, of verbs, uh, sometimes uh, these are redundant uh, in the video. And actually, uh, Matteo asked me to cut a couple of them. <laughs> um, but um, these sort of, uh, uh, of things that now get lost because we tend to rely more on, on Italian or modern Greek or whatever the language uh, we know, uh, and Salentine, clearly, the, the Romance dialect. Um, and the other thing that makes it different is that I, at the time, I don't think I made it consciously, but it makes all sense now looking at it um, a year, you know, uh, afterwards, is that I started inserting in my own writing that the very sentences, uh, the very quotes that I used in, uh, in my book, in, in uh, the ethnography. Uh, so when I say, o cosmo kangeshe, that's actually, the, again, a quote uh, and uh, uh, the title of one of, uh, of the chapters of, of the book. And it captures that moment in time, which was uh, the post-World War II period in which Greek speakers uh, underwent what I call a, a sort of existential displacement uh, in which they realized that the language didn't seem to be uh, valuable uh, in, the, <clears throat> in the present. So they started, um, they stopped uh, transmitting it basically. Uh, so by recovering um, these, uh, these quotes, these very sentences and inserting them, um, I, I got to the idea that possibly this could be called um, a sort of uh, ethnographic poetry, if we do want to accept it as, as a poem. And uh, the attempt that we just saw would be my um, attempt to perform that argument, the fact that uh, Grico uh, is productive through this uh, poetic uh, modality and, um, and hopefully um, the idea of writing in Grico about Grico, about the present through its own modality. Uh, it might be over ambitious, but uh, this is uh, <laughs> what, I, what I tried uh, to, to do there. And um, Matteo, back to, to you. Thank you, Manuela. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I, I wish to, to thank uh, uh, our cameraman and editor, uh, Leonardo Andrea De Giorgi, because in this particular video, he, he, he be a magician. So, because we shoot uh, in the early morning, most of the part of the video, and it transformed with the computer, with all its ability, uh, the day and night. Uh, and, uh, is very uh, interesting for me because it's one of the typical things of the history of cinema to transform things in other things. Uh, but tell uh, how to introduce this uh, fairy tale about the moon. Uh, another question that we suggest to ourselves working is uh, what is a myth? Of course, a myth is a fairy tale in some way, but uh, how we can use today a myth uh, and 
the, the answer, in my opinion, is uh, that, that the aim is to rediscover the ancient, uh, to, to understand uh, uh, the present, the contemporary. Uh, there is a message within uh, the world has changed. Yes, of course, everybody of us can affirm this, but uh, how we can change now? Because we have to change, uh, as the message suggests. So it is an ancient uh, way to tell a story, a sort of mythological way, but that uh, suggests a way to go through the present, to understand the present, and, and to try to live in a different way the future. So for me, the real big importance of the story of Rosalia is that Rosalia has very far roots, but uh, is very near to us. Uh, and this is what uh, uh, touched me uh, as a director, as an artist. Uh, uh, we are able to understand ourselves. That is the big question of, of every uh, form of art. Uh, in, in my opinion, the, the story of Rosalia, white letter to the moon, and try to to be connected to nature, uh, is very very important for the the moment we are living all, all together. This is why we we choose to shoot uh, this video that is is a lot longer than the first uh, because it need uh, more uh, uh, things to be understand. In my opinion, it's more difficult to catch uh, this story. It, uh, and this is why it's more important to, to pay attention. As a director uh, uh, with Manuela, we work uh, uh, a lot on this video. It's more, very difficult to find the place uh, that are all in very mental around Otranto, this is a, a little city in the south of Salento, in south of Puglia. I think Matteo's video has, has oh, frozen. I can, I can say something else. Yes. I, now that he's not listening, I can tell you that uh, he made me walk up at 4.30 every morning and uh, hence uh, the, the bugs under my eyes. And uh, he ended up carrying us the most uh, improbable okay. place. Amita, I, I lost connection for a moment. I don't know if you listen to me now. I hope yes. I see Manuela. Yes, I was just saying the truth that you okay. made me walk up at 4.30 every morning and uh, that you led us through the most improbable places of Salento. Okay but amazing places. I mean, one of the things that I prefer of my job, uh, it's uh, that I'm very lucky. First of all, because I can meet people and person, uh, ordinary human being as Manuela. And uh, also because uh, my job uh, uh, give me the opportunity to see place uh, in a particular moment, as I told you before. Uh, Stand up. And it's gone again. We'll, we'll stand by. Maybe he'll, he came back very quickly the last time. Let's give him another, another few moments. Come on, Mateo. <laughs> this is a good chance for me to say that we're coming to the question period soon. So if you it's, begin thinking, if you have any questions or comments, we'll, we'll be coming to them in a few moments. I hope. All right, he's he's gone away, so he might reappear. I, I like this idea of the competing narratives of the <laughs> yeah. of how it went. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, I, I know while, I knew him. While waiting for him, are we able to ask some questions just to fill in the the? The space. Manuel, is that okay yeah. if we uh, if absolutely we... yes? Okay, yeah. Let's let's go ahead. Would you like to start, Michael? Thank you, thank you very much. First of all, I, I said this in chat. 
Manuela, what an incredible piece you've produced. Incredible in many ways, many ways. Thank you. Um, Mike, okay, my first question is maybe, I'm sorry, maybe I missed this. Maybe I didn't hear. Who is Rosalia? Did I miss something? <laughs> no, it, it's not said who, who Rosalia is. Rosalia is uh, uh, a lady who speaks to uh, the moon and the sea, uh, and he speaks Greek. Uh, that's all we know about Rosalia. Rosalia writes all day long. Um, it could be anyone, it could be me. Um, but it's definitely uh, someone that lives in the present um, and uh, regardless uh, um, of the scenarios that may seem out of, uh, of time. That, that was probably what uh, Matteo would have added, talking about the landscape and his choices uh, of, um, of uh, the settings and the locations. Because it was a fairy tale, we were looking for something uh, suggestive in terms of, uh, of uh, image. But at the same time, um, it was important for me to, to clarify that even if it's uh, in an imaginary work, it, it still is in the present. Uh, it deals with things that uh, probably are timeless, but uh, that we are experiencing right now. So this uh, sense of uh, that Rosalia experiences of uh, estrangement, of, uh, uh, of not knowing uh, who to ask anymore, right? Because that was the time in which we were reading newspapers and reading everything and everyone was sending through WhatsApp uh, every theory and conspiracy theory, whatever. So it was re really not the time to, to listen to anyone. It was the time to stop. Uh, talking as well, and uh, maybe bright into the moon was uh, not something that just Rosalia did, uh, but something that other people uh, felt uh, in that moment. I don't know if I answered so then, your question. We did, of course. So then why Rosalia? Why Rosalia? Where did the name the person okay. who is Rosalia come from? <laughs> Okay, I can give you the real story or uh, the academic one, but I'm gonna go for the real one. Uh, so Rosalia, I don't remember the name of the Greek song, but maybe the Greeks uh, friends online may help. There is a, a song which was written for children <clears throat> and in the, in, the, in the lyrics, it mentions Rosalia. It's a very nice song. And I used to, I mean, I, I heard it while I was uh, uh, conducting field work in, uh, in Greece and actually living on Icaria at that time. I was uh, living on the island of Icaria. So that's how Rosalia, that, that uh, name uh, got stuck in, uh, in my mind. It's not a name that has uh, necessarily any, um, you know, attachment to, to the place either, uh, um, to, to this place, I mean. Uh, but it, uh, it, it was just the sound of it identified with uh, uh, I don't know, with, yeah, with what I wanted Rosalia to say. It's, it, it is more a language for children, I guess, but that's probably why it's timeless or it, it wants to be. Thanks, Manuela. And Matteo has been able to join us again. Do you want to yes, um, pick Thank up you where, you, where you left off? <laughs> I, I lost connection, but I can see you now, and I hope you can see me. I can hear you now. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Okay, thank you. And sorry for that. that that's okay. It's part of the joy of Zoom, and uh, it's part of the live theater aspect of this. Um, so we can, we can certainly take other questions uh, if you people can either raise their hands or put a message in the chat, and I'll call on, I'll call on you. Um, okay. Perhaps in the meantime, I, I had a question that I'll, that I'll, that I'll pose. Uh, one thing I, I really liked about the video was that it, it, in the same way that one could do in theater, it broke the fourth wall, this uh, kind of movement between the voice of the narrator and then the voice of the character. And I was just curious if that was just, was that a deliberate decision or just what your thinking was behind that artistic choice? Okay, thank you for this question. It, it, you touch a very important point in my opinion, because uh, 
we have uh, the poem, I, I call it poem, um, with the author that is also former, and uh, she perform uh, a character, Rosalia. But in some way, this character speak to us. Uh, so in the same way as in theater, we, we go through the fourth wall uh, and we use uh, two moments, uh, one uh, for each video, to uh, let uh, Rosalia speak directly to us. Uh, and uh, it is a choice uh, that uh, want to underline the need to communicate the meaning uh, directly to, to us. I mean, we, we shoot the video knowing that the uh, audience will see in a little laptop or a little phone. So uh, in a way that we are used to speak through the camera, within the camera. Now I'm speaking, uh, looking in the camera. You are speaking with me, looking in the camera in some way. Uh, that is a totally mi big mistake in cinema. But uh, this choice mean uh, uh, to, to suggest us to pay attention. Uh, the, uh, the way we are uh, talking to you is a way that you can recognize in your real uh, uh, daily life. Uh, uh, and, and these two little moments in the, the video uh, wants to, to be part of, of this meaning. Uh, look each other in the eyes and speak to each other without mask, without the mask of Rosalia. Yeah. Just for a moment. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah, those were those were some of my my favorite moments. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. We should be able to add something, Matteo, if no one else uh, has any question. I mean, I, I just want to thank everyone who's uh, writing very nice comments uh, on the chat. Um, I'm happy that uh, what we try to do uh, seems to be um, being achieved. I mean, people got to, I mean, from, from what I'm reading right now from the comments, right? Uh, so that makes me happy. I'm happy too. And I just want to say that is my first Zoom presentation. Uh, I, I usually say, so sorry for any inconvenience or for my uh, being so strange, uh, and maybe I speak too much, uh, but uh, I, as I usually say in this period, I, in this moment, uh, I, I prefer dreaming than streaming. But in this case, uh, streaming is a part of the dreaming. I, I think we all need t-shirts or bumper stickers that say that, that's, that's brilliant. We, we do have uh, two, two people who have just notified me. So let's first go to Alessandro. If you want to unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So first, complimenti to both of you. That was really astonishing. I, that, that was really breathtaking. So thank you. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Uh, and then I have a, a question for both of you. Like um, uh, this more for Manuela probably, you say that the Greco is now spoken a lot in a performative way, but also in performances. Uh, is there any particular reason why there is this production of, uh, Greek, of Greco in, um, the use of Greco in poetry and other kind of forms? Why, why is that? Why, why it happened so? Why? I, that's, a, that's a good question, but it's also a very good one to answer because we have uh, online the people that make my argument uh, alive. Maria is one of them. Maria Arena is uh, uh, an activist from uh, the village of uh, Calimera. She's uh, greeting us. She's one of the examples I refer to um, when I say that Grico is used uh, in performances and in a performative way. There are, first of all, there are cultural events organized uh, in Grecia Salentina, um, one that went through um, many years, it's called uh, Traversando il Grico, 
and in the last few editions uh, was a traveling event going through the various villages. And what happens in this event is that people, um, th there are two sort of uh, ways of, uh, of having them. Either they're very, um, let's say, uh, in a very cozy environment, uh, so you have the reproduction of the same uh, um, setting of the traditional storytelling without amplification, without microphone, without uh, modernity, let's put it this way. Then there, there was, uh, through, the, through time, uh, this other aspect that um, in, got uh, more prominent. People started rehearsing their own contribution to these uh, events. And Maria, for instance, uh, in one of, uh, uh, of her performances, uh, uses uh, um, the story of her own father, uh, the, the memories of her father, and she um, uses uh, Grico, Salentine, and Italian to do it. This is also another important aspect. Greco is seldom used on its own. Uh, it's used uh, in, in uh, often also in order to be understood by uh, a more broad uh, audience because uh, that's the other uh, sad part of the story. Uh, there are no new speakers. Um, so uh, let's see how this uh, will uh, develop through time. But even if Maria, for instance, does not use Grigo in her daily life, she might insert uh, the right sentence at the right time uh, with the right uh, intonation. So it's uh, what I call crossing, this generational crossing. It's a way in which uh, people from the generation that do not, to which Grigo does not belong, because Grico is supposedly uh, belongs to the elderly, which claim their own authority and fight uh, to, to have it. Uh, so uh, this way is a, is a way of crossing this generational gap to connect to the, to, to, yeah, uh, to the past and to the people of the past. And that's what Maria does. And that's what performance in Grico is all about. It's not art defined it. Uh, and uh, strict terms, but it's uh, the appropriation of art uh, for uh, activism. Um, okay. So uh, I, I think that's a very important aspect of the life of Grico today. Okay, can, can I ask the question also to Matteo or? Uh, yes, yeah. Alessandro. In, no, but no, another question for you. Like okay. uh, the, 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 the video was beautifully shot, very poetic and and so I, I just was just wondering, what does Greco mean for, for you? And how could you get so in, so in touch with it to, to, to shot everything as, as if it came for you, as if it was already part of your experience? Oh, yeah, it, it, it's totally new for me, Greco. But uh, uh, as I told before, uh, I imagine my job, uh, I understand that my job, uh, it, it, is a sort of a bridge to human being, to culture. So I, I, I was very uh, lucky in my career to work with different languages uh, all over the world. And, and Greco is a, a language that for me is important as you suggest before, for uh, the word performance, uh, only performing uh, languages, we can uh, uh, keep uh, it alive. So theater is important, not only uh, as, a, as a final uh, production, I mean, or uh, a video production, but the, the, the word theater means that uh, through the speaking uh, in front of a camera or on the stage, acting, uh, we take uh, alive the culture, in this case, Greco. For me, Greco is, is something that I don't know to know. I don't know how to explain better. I don't know nothing about Greco, uh, but I know everything about what Greco means because I, I work on theater. So I mean the importance of root, of tradition, of, of culture, and what it uh, means uh, for uh, find your own identity as a human being. So this is why I feel myself so near being so far, of course. I and also because of time, Matteo, and also because through time, I, 
I would say, uh, I, non mi viene la parola adesso, ti ho stalkerizzato, uh, I, you know, I annoyed you uh, talking about the possibility of inserting Grico in your performances because I want you to put Grico everywhere and you let me do it. So uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And now I'm start to learn Grico, like for example, patonta, patonta. No, petonta, petonta. Petonta, petonta, lo sapevo, I know it. Petonta, petonta. Petonta, petonta. petonta. Yeah, that was one of the big uh, achievements, was that the guy who filmed uh, the, the video with uh, a non Greek speaker, is uh, this guy is only 24, um, and Leonardo, and he's, uh, yeah, not knowing Greek for me, even if he just learns, you know, a few sentences or a few words was a big achievement. And apparently this uh, petonta, petonta, estase created them a lot of problems in, in the video. So they heard it so many times that now they memorized it. <laughs> so at least there is a, a transmission of language through this experiment. That's it. However little. <laughs> That's that's wonderful. Uh, let's what, great great to hear all these stories. Uh, let's go to Mina for the last question. Hi, uh, I'm really excited about this performance. The first time I have uh, seen a video or performance with Pico, and so my comment might be more like rediscovering the wheel for you. But I really like how fairy like the fairy tale apart from. It's being used as a myth, and the Greek was written in like that and comes from that. It's also how we use it in modern times to talk about difficult topics to children or to have them like come in by the window, like topics. Okay, like the one with the sea, for example, it was in the news, but again in the news in the TV, it's somewhere elsewhere. Whereas in when you go into a fairy tale and you go into an, a performance and an experience, it kind of comes back and for comes come like you feel it like you leave it kind of and um and and in a strange way uh Grico was like that for me because I'm a native speaker of modern Greek and like I was picking some stuff and like not picking them and it was really fascinating how it was it has been luring me in to again think about either hard topics or about the language and the words used and you know, theater, and then the, she was always saying like tarot, tithalata, like I see the sea, and then, uh, so it, it's more like, this is more like a common fascination for this uh, experience that it gave us. Uh, thank and, you, thank you very, very much. I, I know that Greek touches the heart of, uh, of a lot of Greek uh, people because of uh, uh, the sounds so that may remind them or the words as you say you know the known among the unknown or vice versa uh, uh, and I'm I'm happy that you could uh, pick up uh, some uh, some of it and thank you for all the nice words you 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 said oh we have we, we do have time for one more question let's do one more for let's go back to Michael a very pertinent question, he says. Okay, yeah, I'm just playing with my phone, trying to unmute and mute while other people are talking. I'm here, thank you. Yeah, I think um, I think one question that I, I think that, that that's very central to um, the whole production is the binary will be, you know, the initially suggested binary between Rosalia and, and Manuela, um, you know, and Manuela, would know what I'm speaking about here because I know that some of her work, a lot of her work is um, focusing on this. How does the emergence of Rosalia this piece and um, give life to Manuela? And how does Manuela speaking about the Rosalia give life to, I mean, how do both um, nodes actually give life to each other, signify each other at the same time and I, you know, that's the beginning of deconstructing what the narrator is and what Ro Rosalie is, but how do both of, um, both of these bodies come to life, do you think? Or how have they come to life in this piece? I, I think that this Rosalia um, mask and unmask is uh, it's just because I'm really tired of uh, cutting myself into different things 
I am the Greek not mother tongue speaker, but anthropologist. I am the Greek activist. I am the one who writes ac academic papers, or at least try, tries to, as you know, and uh, fail as well in terms of timing. Uh, I'm tired of having to cut what I do. I think that um, homogenize, I mean, it's a schizophrenic life if we keep uh, dividing uh, and compartmentalizing uh, what we do. Rosalia and Manuela are one thing, but Rosalia is not just Manuela, and Manuela is not just Rosalia, and uh, um, and I'm really I don't know how else to put it uh, because it's uh, Rosalia gives voice to Manuela as. Manuela gives voice to Rosalia, and Rosalia is not just Manuela. So it's very complex, and that's why I think that the ethnographic element, and, and that's where the, the common ground uh, comes to forth between poetry and anthropology as well, and uh, activism, poetry, uh, in terms of uh, being active uh, um, in the language as well. Because it's the same thing, you are required to stop and, and observe, but also to participate. Uh, so it's the participant observation that we are used to do as anthropologists. But this uh, creative way to, uh, to express oneself, then it's, uh, um, sorry, there, there are a lot of guys coming through. The, they distracted me. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that even at, at the same time, as, uh, as much as I don't want poetry and anthropology and ethnography to be considered separate in this attempt. Uh, this, as much I would like you not to uh, put a name else to Rosalia than Rosalia or to me. You know, it's just take it as it is. And it's a polyphony anyway. There, is, there are a lot of people in that piece. Uh, there, I, I mentioned some of them. I don't mention many of them. I quote uh, them literally and i use their quotes creatively in others so uh rosalia is just uh it's just the title it, and i stop it, here you mean, it, it, you mean that this polyphony that, then okay. this polyphony then um it's not only a polyphony but you know it's it's, it's bactinian so you're saying it then becomes a critical perspective of that um, would be my ambition and dialect in in yeah in foreign context. That would be my ambition. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I, I mean, I I spent years trying to, trying and finally managing to write the book, uh, The Ethnography on Grico. And it was only after all that attempt that I managed to write one half a page poem that summarizes it all. It's all there. It, it's all there in half a page. It was like, if I'd known that, you know, I could do it just in half a page, I would save, you know, uh, six years of my life. But I needed those six years of my life in order to write this poem. Stop me because I can keep talking forever. No. The people who know me know it. We, no, we probably should stop there. I mean, that, that's an incredible statement. And it makes me think about the power of character in performance, like by, by having a that's a way to extend oneself as a performer and explore all kinds of things. So it, to me, it makes sense of, of Rosalia as a, as a character in performance and that can embody, that character can embody all kinds of experiences. Um, so that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Mateo. Thank you, Manuela. Thank you, this was so inspiring. Um, Grazie and, di cuore. Uh, Thank you very much. Efkaristopoli. I think I said it on the language of the present people. There, there is Adriana there sending me a smile and a kiss. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, for the, your thank nice Thank you, words. everybody. Thank you, Lana. Thank, thank you. you thank you so much. Thank and you, we'll Lana. be back uh, with another thank session you. in two weeks. So take care, everybody. Grazie.